Hydrocephalus. This is not a word that most people know much about. So what is it? Hydrocephalus is a brain condition in which access cerebrospinal fluid builds up in the ventricles of the brain. The excessive accumulation of CSF results in the abnormal widening of spaces in the brain called ventricles. Hydrocephalus requires immediate treatment because of the pressure that builds up in the brain. If not treated, the pressure on the brain could damage the brainstem, which regulates our breathing and heartbeat. There are about 200 cases in the United States, and I happen to be one of them. So, how do you treat this medical condition? Well, there are a few options. A ventriculopineal shunt, a ventricular shunt, and a lupinomial shunt. Or an endoscopic third ventrostriculoscopy. All three require surgery. And follow up with a nurse surgeon or a neurologist. This may seem scary, but people with hydrocephalus can live productive lives. Even a life with a college education included. Although, as the phrase goes, it is possible to achieve anything, there are a few issues that some people may experience that lead others to believe that they are incapable. For example, in a teacher's guide created by the Hydrocephalus Association, it states, for some students, high abstract math, like algebra, may be impossible. In such cases, the academic program may, be need, may need to be modified. And hyperverbal communication in children with hydrocephalus, called cocktail party syndrome, is often found in children with hydrocephalus. The children never seem to stop talking. However, if analyzed, it is usually superficial or inappropriate to the situation. I can admit that some <coughs> parts of math, like memorizing basic facts, are difficult for me. However, there are calculators that I can use to solve these issues, and other math <coughs> manipula manipulatives which also aid. Also, if I have tutoring for a few hours each week, it can help me practice the skills to solve abstract math problems. The effect of hydrocephalus depends on how much damage is caused to the brain. I would describe hydrocephalus as a spectrum because not every case is as severe. Some children with hydrocephalus may be unable to walk or talk, while others go on to pursue their hopes and dreams that most normal people pursue in their lives. A prime example of this would be a boy named Benjamin. He was diagnosed with hydrocephalus and is a wheelchair bound nonverbal. He struggles with daily tasks like school and interacting with others. Another example that shows that there is a spectrum within the hydrocephalus community is Brianna Egan. She had an IEP from preschool through high school. Despite this, during her high school years, she participated in the advanced placement program at her school and constantly challenged herself. She is now studying at the College of Southern Nevada, majoring in Justice and Computer Science. She hopes to one day be able to work for the FBI or other government agencies in order to best protect and serve the United States and its citizens. While many people with hydrocephalus can achieve the impossible, there are many stigmas <clears throat> around hydrocephalus, which makes it harder to achieve your dreams and aspirations. For example, when I was in middle school, I was in normal classes with my peers. That is, until I had brain surgery. The teachers thought I was incapable to <clears throat> comprehend material 
like other people, or partake in advanced mathematics. So they put me in classes with people who had an immense difficulty with reading and comprehension. I fought my way out of these classes, and because I knew I was capable of going to college and doing everything your average person could do at my age, I also found that these classes did not challenge my <clears throat> caliber. I knew that I could either return to my normal classes or engage in classes that were more challenging. I happened to be right, and I ended up moving to a more challenging class and never looked back. Having hydrocephalus is a challenge, but it is not an impossibility. The lesson to be learned in this is don't be, <clears throat> don't let a medical condition be the reason that you are not pushing yourself to do better in life. Because <clears throat> you can do better. And if somebody is holding you back from anything, like pursuing your dreams or going to college, you should go ahead and pursue your dreams. And in the end, show people that didn't believe in you that anything is possible. Thank you.